This is the Creality Ender 3. And what did I want to say about it? This is the Creality Ender 3. It's earned its place at the top of the pile as pretty much the cheapest printer you can buy. That's half decent for the money. And half decent really is an understatement because this is a pretty damn good printer for the money. But today, we're not talking about this machine. Let me put it on the side here because I'm kind of done with it. We're talking about this thing over here. This is a CR10. That printer's daddy. And to be specific, this is a CR10 5S. The biggest thing you can probably buy for decent amounts of money until you start getting stupid money for printers. To be the chief evangelist. I don't know what that means either. I think it just means that they want to build good printers. And this one, for a very long time, has kind of been that printer. Is it still that printer? And that's why I've got this machine over here. It's really enormous. And I think that's because of what this machine is. And what is it? And in fact, the replacement for this machine, which is the CR10. Well, oh my word, if you want to print something that actually takes up all of this print volume, just got this idea. If you want to print something that takes up the full print volume of this thing. Oh my word. Look what I got. A little laser with it. Well, that's cool. So, this machine really is about a bit you can get for money. And if you take this out as well, let's start for it. That, let's have a look inside here. Bed clips, wrong power supply, build instructions, tools, side pieces. Uh, that's the filament spool holder. Filament runout detector. I really like these things because I got them with the Ender as well. Sort of USB micro SD on the back. Please be careful because they are very, very sharp. Um, masking tape. I'm a print on glass man myself. Let's see what's in this bag over here. Oh, I hope I'm not having to crimp any of that because that would suck. Oh, that's nice. These are all extra spares or what? These are all extra spares. Okay, let's see what's in this bag. I think those are your flush cut pliers. Uh, cable ties. What have we got you? That's the tools. Screws and a couple of thumb screws. And extra nozzle. Extras. It's actually quite nice because they do have pretty much the basic instructions and I think it should be pretty straightforward on how to put this together. If I screw it up, I'll read the instructions afterwards. All right. Yes. Look. That is a footprint of this machine. And I'll zoom back out a bit. My face is still, yeah, I just don't think that you need to see it. Um, that sharp thing for you, some idea. This wrapping feels like cellophane initially, but it's actually a very, very thick. Oh, I see. Okay, so thick masking sheet tapes that's meant to go on the glass. I don't need that right now. I am actually just going to wrap it back up. Uh, I can see some marks on the frame here, which would lead me to believe this machine was actually pre-assembled. I'm not crazy about that. Um, really not crazy about that. Let me get this thing off here and show you. If you look at this, see that angle. This should be kind of square and it's kind of not. I really do think this bracket here should be square for that belt to run nicely. Now the other thing to check while I've got the camera in my hands, under this gantry, these wheels, see how that spins, it shouldn't 
Oh, how cool is that? Okay, so you've got your filament detector here. What's in here at the moment is basically a bridge chip, essentially, because if you disconnect this one, if I can disconnect this one, uh, it's basically open and it's going to read as if the filament is run out. But if you want to bypass it, you can plug that in or you plug the actual filament sensor in. So you can choose to use it or not. Uh, the reason you might not want to use it is that they do sometimes give false triggers. So some people aren't crazy about these things. Uh, one of the machines standing behind me, uh, I have used it and I actually ended up just sticking a piece of filament through it so that it doesn't actually trigger the whole time. Huh. Okay. Now. So, tight enough to pull it, and then I'm just going to loosen it off a little bit. Oh, I've got enough space here to put the second one in. I sort of got them both. Firm. See what I mean by big. And before I put the glass on, let me see. Uh, everything but the spool holder. This is going to go in there. I think I'm going to leave that till later. Start plugging in some of the other bits and pieces here. Um, you've got your end stop on the side here and you've got your stepper motor here. So on the one that I marked Y, you're going to have one of them plug in there and one of them plug in there. And that's pretty much it. Um, no cable ties here somewhere. Let's do it. Oh, look, everything in China, things get made differently. And I always say, you know, China doesn't build cheap, they build the spec. Spec on the cable ties clearly is lower. I couldn't believe it lap broke as I said it. Let me get some of my own cable ties. That. Okay, so. Um, plug that in there and just sort of like fit it in the side here. You see the. Around so. That I'm gonna do. The same with this one over here, which will run to there. So we're going to get those three, which will be nice and neat to there. But I can do the cable management while I build. So this is for the heater bed, which you can see the plugs at the back here. Uh, one's got a lot and one's only got four and the plugs correspond to that. Uh, these ones, and let me actually show you while I've got this here. You'll see it's got like a, a X on it. X, X, and in the case of that one, that's the E for the extruder. There are a couple of things to this. Because it's got two lead screws, you've got to level the gantries and that you'll level to the bed. So you'll get the bed level to the frame, level the gantries at the level. If they level, you'll get those and those together. This one's a 
a little bit off so I'm gonna make it go a little bit higher and then as this moves up and down it should move up and down level and there shouldn't be any play on all, any of the wheels and the gantries are on but these are what attaches to the sides and that one is your end stop as well as on your gantries so these sort of half nuts you pretty much align them the way that you want them plant them in and there you go they literally just slot in like that and I'll show you again with the other side because there's no way I'm taking them out again and as you start turning them they actually start locking into place let me show you okay so to put these on I'm going to want to loosen them off and see how they are, sort of align them so that they go in. So I'm not sure if you can see, see at the back there how that turns. That's what locks it in place. Now the difficult one is this one because you can't actually see it from anywhere. That one's in. Get around and see this one. Extruder goes into that one, this one goes into That's about it. That's quite a long way to get down there. I don't actually know what the first print is on this thing.
What the hell is it? It's the most hideous thing I've ever seen. Thank goodness it's out of focus. Oh no, it's in focus. Now you gotta look at it. So that might be the ugliest thing I've ever printed. Not the print itself, just what the hell it is. Um, the print is okay, but they probably sliced it at some insane setting just to get a nice print off the machine so that you can. Uh, realistically, I'm never gonna print anything at that sort of resolution. Um, I've pre-sliced something, I'm you know, we're a month away from Halloween, so I'll print a pumpkin or something. A 500 by 500 pumpkin, which is around 300 high, um, about 15 days to print, so I guess I'll print that, maybe, four kilos of filament. Um, but that's the kind of idea, the kind of things that you print with this, and the kind of sizes that you print. Um, so in the end, probably a bigger nozzle on the thing just to be able to print that. Anyway, that's it for this printer. It prints like it should, did its first print in four hours, nine minutes, which I guess it should have done. Um, yeah, like the video, subscribe. Maybe I'll do a live stream of the big print for Halloween coming up in a bit. Um, see you next time. Cheers.